Shalom. Appreciating Ethiopian Aliyah, celebrating a bat mitzvah in a unique way, and children preparing for Shavuot on this week's program, so let's get started. Shalom and welcome to Israeli Salad. In many cases, Jewish boys and girls start getting involved in banking and savings when they reach the age of bar or bat mitzvah. The money from the gifts from the celebration is often the first large sum of money they receive. We'll now see how two 12-year-old girls decided to use the money they received for an important cause. Avital and I, we just met. We met about 15 minutes ago here. They've known each other for only 15 minutes and live a 12-hour flight away. But both Avital Gold and Nina Rubin decided to contribute the money they received for their bat mitzvah to the Zichron Menachem organization, which helps children sick with cancer. Our daughter celebrated her bat mitzvah. She was thinking about what to do with the gifts, and she decided to ask all the guests invited to her bat mitzvah to give money so she could contribute the money to this institute. The money donated by Nina and Avital went to purchasing a video system in benefit of the Zichuron Menachem children. It's nice to see that they're using what we did and it's nice to see something that we donated that they like. The new video system is added to the many activities and attractions in the Zichron Menachem Center where you can find almost anything that can help the sick children. This center is for the child, the siblings, the parents, the whole family. This place is aimed at helping the family stick together and stay strong from the day they find out the child is sick with cancer. We'll provide basic medical treatments and help with education. We want them to forget a little about their sickness. I had a lot of fun. It's always fun, every time I come. It really moved me to see how all the kids feel at home here. Avital saw how children who were taken away from their childhood get their childhood back in the center. It's wonderful to have my daughter be able to touch and feel what she's done. We were trying to bring a little meaning to the bat mitzvah celebration, which in New York can be a little bit, uh, a little crazy, and you forget the Judaism part. She got it. She got the message, and that was important for us. The Ethiopian community in Israel contributes to Israeli society in many ways, but not many know of the difficult sacrifice made by these people in their efforts to reach the land of Israel. May God remember his sons and daughters of the Jews of Ethiopia who lost their lives in their effort to immigrate to Israel. Israel shall remember them and be blessed through their children. The hardest thing for me was when my mother passed away. I remember that, although I was only eight years old. Milako Asher Eileen lost a father, a mother, a grandfather, and a grandmother on the way to Jerusalem, the city that his family dreamt about for more than 2,000 years. There are almost no families in the Ethiopian community that didn't lose family members on the way to the Promised Land. Some were killed by roadside bandits, and others died from disease in Sudan. On the way here in Sudan, my mother, her husband, and two young brothers passed away. There are nights I don't sleep. There are nights when I cry all night. I have no mother, no one to come to, no one to hug. 
On the 37th Jerusalem Day, the first annual memorial ceremony took place in memory of the Ethiopian Jews who did not succeed in reaching the land of Israel. President Katsav, Prime Minister Sharon, and other public officials took part in the event. Thousands from the Ethiopian Jewish community arrived at the temporary monument located near Ramat Rachel, on the outskirts of Jerusalem. For the first time in 20 years, the State of Israel is acknowledging the 4,000 people from our community who perished on the way to Israel through Sudan. We'll make sure that the story of the heroism of the Ethiopian immigrants will be forever remembered in an appropriate place. During the ceremony, the cases, the religious leaders of the Ethiopian Jewry, said prayers in memory of the fallen. A military cantor recited the Kel Malerachamim prayer in their memory, and a bereaved son said Kaddish. Until today, I had no specific place to come to. Today is an historical day. It's a very important step made by the State of Israel, which appreciates that we've made sacrifices to come to this country. The appreciation and honor help the Ethiopian community look forward to their total integration into the Israeli society. We have to have patience to achieve all our ambitions and to become a total part of the society. On Wednesday, the 6th of the month of Sivan, May 26th, we celebrated the festival of Shavuot. Before we go over to Rabbi Samson to discuss the festival, which commemorates our receiving of the Torah, let's take a look at a unique event where parents and children filled a Tel Aviv stadium to show their connection to the Torah. The location, Yad Eliyahu Stadium in Tel Aviv. The date, four days before the Shavuot festival. Thousands swarmed the stadium, filling all the chairs, filled with excitement to be at this spectacular event. No, this is not a basketball or a soccer game. These parents and children have come to participate in the convention of the Mibereshit movement. Mibereshit, which means from the beginning, the first words in the first book of the Torah, is led by Rabbi Mordechai Elon, head of the Yeshivat HaKotel in Jerusalem. The organization's overall purpose is to reinforce Jewish identity amongst the people of Israel and to improve the general attitude toward Jewish tradition. The event this evening was the culmination of one of Mibereshit's major programs called Parents and Children Learn from the Beginning. Thousands of mothers and daughters and fathers and sons throughout the country learn Torah together once a week using a weekly brochure put out by Mibereshit as a resource. Rabbi Elon explains that the connection between parent and child is the foundation upon which rests the development of the Jewish people. This is a watershed event, in my opinion, in the history of religious Zionism in this country. It's a, a new beginning. People are, parents and kids all over the country, are learning together for an hour a week in our program and are generating a feeling in a family where they're passing the baton of Judaism from one generation to the next to ensure that we'll have a Jewish future for this country. The special event, which was honored by the presence of the President of the State of Israel, commemorated the Jewish nation's receiving of the Torah, with a special sound and light show which included fireworks, lighting effects, and soundtrack describing the momentous revelation at Mount Sinai. President Katsav was given the honor to carry the Torah, and Rabbi Elon recited the Ten Commandments. <laughs> The Cohen family from Gush Katif, whose children were severely injured in a terror incident, were on the stage as well, in an expression of admiration to the bravery of the Israeli people. The climax of the event occurred when Rabbi Elon read out the verse of Shema and declared out loud, Hashem is our God, Hashem is the one and only. Thousands of young and old voices were heard answering, crying out the verse in excitement and emotion. Throughout the event, the worldwide Hasidic singer Avram Fried entertained the audience with his exciting and joyful songs. More than looking back at the successes they have achieved so far, 
that the Mebereshit movement continues to plan to the future. In the future, a million children throughout the world will be sitting with the weekly Torah page, learning together, writing one another, connecting to each other, singing together, gathering together, and accepting the yoke of heaven together. Upon leaving the stadium, the president approached Rabbi Elon and told him that he wants Mibereshit's program to become the nationwide Tanakh learning program. Rabbi Elon answered him immediately, it's a deal. The way that we will come to Lashana Haba'a Yerushalayim Abnuya is that all of us together will learn together Horim, Yeladim, parents and children, Yehudim Yehudim, Jews and Jews together, everywhere, every place, every time, with our one Torah and with our one Am, Ke'ish Echad, Belev Echad, Nekabel Et HaTorah, Belashana Haba'a, Kulanu, 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 Bi'Yerushalayim Abnuya, Be'ezrat Hashem. And now, our weekly insight. Shalom Rabbi David Sampson. Shalom Yoni, shalom to all of our viewers. So what's the meaning of the festival of Shavuot? And what's the idea behind the tradition of staying up all night to learn Torah? Well, the idea of Shavuot is the idea of Torah. We've been counting 49 days from, from Pesach till Shavuot, waiting day after day for finally the day to arrive, the day of the receiving of the Torah. Historically, this marks the day when the Jewish people received the Torah. And because the Jewish people, when they received the Torah, they were kind of lackadaisical and they took an easy night. And even though the morning was uh, for the receiving of the Torah, the night before, everybody slept well and they weren't awake in order to receive the Torah at dawn. So in order to amend and correct the, the lackadaisical attitude of the Jewish people during the generation of receiving the Torah, throughout the generations, the Jewish people are up all night celebrating. And how's the best way to celebrate? By studying Torah. So we study Torah all night on the birthday of the Torah, the day that we receive the Torah at Sinai. On Shavuot we read the book of Ruth. Why is that? Shavuot, aside from being the birthday of the Torah, is also the birthday of King David, who is the founder of the kingdom in Israel, of Israel. And he was born on Shavuot. To commemorate the fact that he was born, we read the Megillah of Ruth, which talks about the lineage of King David. It wasn't at all clear that King David was allowed to be king and that he was actually Jewish because his lineage was from Moab. And it wasn't clear at that time that it was possible to accept converts from Moab. And Samuel the prophet is the one who stated that it is permissible to have a convert woman, even though a convert man is prohibited from the tribe of Moab. And as a result, he wrote the Megillah of Ruth in order to give King David a kind of book of pedigree so that the Jewish people will be able to prize themselves in the pedigree of their king. Thank you very much, Rabbi Samson. The Weekly Insight is brought to you in cooperation with Mahon Meir, the largest Zionist institute in Israel, bringing people closer to Judaism. Before we leave, I'd like to thank all those who've sent us emails. Your comments, ideas, feedback, and support help us bring you what you want to see. So, keep them coming. That's all for this week. Join us again next week for another program. Until then, from all of us here at Israel National TV, Shalom. Shalom.